A really great way of adding a lighting effect isn't by adding lights at all, it's by adding shadows. Adding shadows can allow you to get that feeling that there is a light source being put on your character. I have this guy here that I animated, he's just doing this random looping cycle, but if I render it out, you can see that there's a few things already put on him. One, there's a shadow overlaid on top of him, and two, he has this perspective shadow going out behind him. And I'm going to show you how to do these effects. So if you double click on your layer, whatever your character's layered in, it's going to give you a set of options. Now there's a shadows tab. So when you select the shadows tab, um, there's a few different settings that you can select. I'm going to turn them off and then go one by one through these just to show you what they do. So this first one here is called layer shadow. And this is simply a drop shadow. Um, you can change the effects on it, the offset, uh, the direction of it, the blur of it. So it can either be completely crisp or completely blurry. And you can change the color here, the opacity and the color of your shadow. Now, going down to layer shading, this is one that I use quite a bit. Um, the current settings that I have, I have a threshold. If I turn that threshold off and then we render it, control R, um, well, it's got some blur on there. So right now it's got a nice soft blur. But if I turn that blur off and then we have a look, um, you can see what it does is it really crisps up these edges. If we turn inverted off, you can see it gives us a shadow along the outside of our character. So it looks like the light source is shining right on his face. So this contraction here is what's going to be adding that rounded effect. So if we go really big with it, it might be too much. But if we shrink it way down, you can see that we have these hard lines here. So this cutoff is because of the sleeve. And you can see it doesn't quite look perfect. It's not quite what you'd like. Typically what I do is I like to invert that shadow and it gives a nice rim light to the character. And we can, let's just take a look at this one now, see how it looks. There we go. It feels, in my opinion, just a little bit more dramatic. Um, now, you might not want your character to have that shadow, uh, or it might be too dark, but you can change the colors, you can change the opacities. Now, you can also change the direction. So if we have it right here at the side, There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now let's move on to the 3D shadow. So this is called a perspective 3D shadow. And if you turn it on, your defaults will be different. Your default will probably be one and zero. And then you can change the color and the opacity here. So let's just see what this default would look like for you. So we hit apply, then we render. There we go. And it goes straight back behind him with a nice little blur on it. Now it's kind of hard to see that shadow because it's obscured by his body. Um, so the scale of it is how long the shadow is and the shear is how far or which direction the shadow will be going. So if I scale the shadow up, and then I change the direction. So a positive shear is going to put it to the left of my character or to the right of my screen. And then a negative will put it to the left of my, did I say that? To the left of my screen, right? Okay, I'll just show you. So let's push this up. I don't want the shear too big because then it gets a little funky. But let's have a look now 
at what the shadow does. And it gives a nice um, blurred shadow. You can also turn the blur off and it can have a nice crisp line to the shadow. That looks really good. Uh, another thing you might be asking yourself is, my shadows don't work. My shadows are off the chart somewhere and they just, they're not matching my character. Why don't they match my character? There's a very simple solution for that. So if you're having trouble with the direction or the placement of your shadow, that has to do with your um, the origin of your character. So if you select your character, come over to your, your toolbar here, you can select this origin, and you're going to put it right at the, the floor line of your character. Because if I put it here at his waist, right there, you're going to see that's going to change my shadow. So the location of your origin is very important. So put it right there at your feet. That's going to ground your shadow. This is essentially telling you or telling your shadow where to go. Um, and there you have it. That's how I get my shadows. That's how I get my lighting effect. Um, very simple techniques. Feel free to find your own techniques. Um, share your thoughts. If you have a better solution, let me know about it. Uh, I love learning new things about Moho. And I love learning new things from you guys because you're very knowledgeable about this stuff. More so than me at times. Um, so, that being said, maybe I'll just touch on this real quick. Control R is the render your image. Well, how would you render an animation like this? Well, there's a couple of options, but there's two ways that I like to do it. So if you go File, Export, Animation, you're going to be given a couple of options. The first way is just to leave everything as it is. Um, MP4, Video Format, change the location of your file, and just hit OK, and you're going to get a video. Perfect. Well, the second way, what if you just want the alpha channel? You don't want the background shown, you don't want a solid black or solid white, you just want the character so that you can import it into After Effects and uh, composite with something else. Well, what I use for that is I typically use, uh, what is it? This one right here, MOV PNG Alpha. And then you hit OK and it's going to render out your alpha. So now we have a character with alpha channels that we can import to After Effects or whatever program we're using and composite it with other things. So it's a very simplistic way of doing shadows. It's a very powerful tool. Feel free to play around with it and have fun. And thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to learn how to make a character like this, follow the links below, go to my website and you can check it out from there. As always, thanks for watching guys.